Hello, Fairhaven. Thanks for joining us today in the Daily Reflection as we get into God's Word. And we just want to allow you to just uh, enjoy hearing from God's Word. And hopefully as you hear God's Word, He will speak to you in your heart and, and build you up and how He wants to build you up. And uh, first of all, what a great sermon and uh, awesome services on Sunday. God was definitely moving. The Holy Spirit was moving. I know at our campus we had many people stand up as, as Pastor David gave an invitation to receive Christ. Uh, the one true salvation in Jesus. Many stood up uh, across all the campuses. We had many people make first time commitments for Jesus. How awesome is that? That's why we exist. And at our campus, it was so cool. Even as I was praying at the end um, and closing out the service, I noticed this young man in the front who was just in tears. And I got to pray with him after the service and, and he was just in tears of repentance, uh, tears of just renewal in his life as the Holy Spirit was moving and it was it was awesome to see what God was doing. And so today we're going to talk about how Jesus is the door. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, and the whole series has been amazing. But this past Sunday, the question was, what makes Christianity unique? And that's an important question. It's an important question that you should know the answer to if you are a Christian, because when someone comes up to you and says, hey, well, what is the difference between Christianity and all these other religions? What makes you unique? Why do you say that you are the only way? Well, and here's the simple answer. It's grace. It's the grace of God because Christianity is the only religion that teaches. It's not about us earning our favor to God. You see, religion says we need to uh, work our way up to God. It's man getting to God by works, but Christianity is God coming to man. It's Jesus coming to us. And, and that's why that visual David gave was so important and so perfect between are you trying to climb the ladder of religion or just open the door of Christianity? And that's why we read this scripture where Jesus says in Revelation 3, what does he say? He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will what? I will come in and dine with him. You see, it's an invitation. Grace is not something we deserve. It's something given to us. The great acronym for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. And that's what's so important. You see, it's not what we do to earn God's favor or love. It's what God has done for us on the cross through Christ. And that's what's important. And I think it's so interesting when Jesus says that verse in Revelation 3. He's talking to the church of Laodicea. Look it up, Revelation 3. It's the lukewarm church. You see, he's talking to the Christian. He's telling you, he's telling us, he's telling the people in that church way back when, he was saying, I know you're lukewarm. I know you're one foot in the world and one foot in the church. And maybe you feel that way today. We all go through seasons in our faith where sometimes we go through the motions. Sometimes we get lukewarm. And Jesus says, here's the answer, the solution to being lukewarm. Open the door. Allow him to come into your heart. Put him back on the throne of your heart. We don't have to earn his favor. We can find forgiveness and grace in an instant as we open our heart to him, as we allow him to come and dine in with us. That means to, to grow with us, to have a relationship with us, to spend time with us. That's the beauty of Christianity, the beauty of our faith. You see, all of the faiths teach one thing. It's an earning and approval. It's a works-based righteousness versus a grace-based righteousness. You look at Islam, the five pillars, trying to earn your way to Allah's favor. Buddhism, right? You look at Hinduism and karma and reincarnation and the caste system. I mean, religion in general is just this idea of a scale, isn't it? When I ask someone, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? When I have that conversation with someone who's not a Christian, here's the, here's the response, no matter what. Well, I think I've done enough good deeds to outweigh my bad deeds. So I should probably then go to heaven because I'm, my scale is, is correct. And that's a natural response. That makes sense. That's kind of mathematical, isn't it? That's a human instinct that I've done enough good deeds to outweigh my bad deeds. Well, guess what God says? There's no scale. The scales are gone. Why? Because all have fallen short of the glory of God. No one is good, not one, the Bible says. And so we can't earn God's favor. He's a holy God. So we can't stand in the presence of a holy God with, with sin. 
But what God says is the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Even with our sin, we can't earn enough favor from God. It's by his grace and believing what Jesus did for us on the cross, not what we do for him. You see, the gospel is not go and do, but receive what he's already done for us. And that should motivate us to live for him. That's why faith always comes before works, right? Not the opposite. So what do we learn from this? We also learn that Jesus is the door. That imagery comes over and over again. So in John 10, if you have your Bibles, John 10, verse 7, here's what Jesus says. He said, Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not hear them. You see, Jesus is saying this, be careful who you listen to. Throughout this whole chapter in John 10, great chapter to read, he's talking about how he is the good shepherd and the sheep hear his voice. You see, sheep are naturally just dumb animals. I mean, they don't have a lot of instincts. They need a shepherd. They will go wherever the pack leads them, where the herd leads them. But it's interesting because the sheep listen very well and they hear the voice of their shepherd. And Jesus is saying, be careful what voice you're listening to because the enemy, the thief, wants to rob and steal and destroy. He has the voice of lies, but sometimes it can sound like a little bit of truth, but it's not. So we have to have discernment and know the voice of God, the voice of his word, so we don't listen to the voice of the world, the voice of lies because that's what the thief is. And then he says this at the end. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? Saved. And he will, I, and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus is saying, I'm the door. I'm the way to salvation. And not just salvation, but sanctification. Not just eternal life, but the abundant life we have here with him. You see, the imagery that he's giving us is back in those days when they would be out in the fields a shepherd would literally make a sheep pen to, to secure and protect the sheep from the wolves and from uh, the outdoors. And so he would just gather rocks and build this kind of you know, makeshift pen. And then he'd bring the sheep in at night to protect them. But he had no door. So what would the shepherd do? He would literally sleep. He would prostrate himself and lay down and he would become the door between all these rocks. And so the sheep would not leave because he would protect them. In the same way, Jesus is saying, I am that door. I'm here to protect you and love you. But in order to get in, in order to know eternal life, you have to come through me. And the question is, have you done that? Have you made a commitment to Jesus? Do you know that he is your Lord and Savior? And if not, today is the day of salvation. What hinders you from doing that? And maybe you've done that, like me. When I was 21, I made that decision. But maybe you feel like you're not walking in the abundant life that God has for you. And that's when Jesus says, I not only want to be the door, but I want to be your abundant life. I want to lead you and guide you as your good shepherd. And, and right now, maybe Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. And he says, I just want you to open it. I just want you to, to surrender, to die to yourself and listen to my voice. Because there's no greater life, Christian, than the life Jesus has for you today. Live in that abundant life today with his peace and his joy and his blessings. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for today. Thank you that we can worship you. Thank you that you can pour into our hearts. We ask today that you would empty us of anything that's not of you and fill us with everything that is of you. And maybe you're living a lukewarm life right now. Maybe you're coasting through your faith. Lord, help us instead to seek you first in our lives. Help us to put you on the throne of our heart. Help us, Lord, to, to honor you and to trust you in everything we do. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, that you give us your word. You give us your, your words of wisdom and you guide us by your spirit. We pray you do that today as well. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next time. Have a good one.